What's up guys, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Two Car Garage. As you know, we're working on this 2005 Honda VTX 1800F, so that's the sporty version, right behind me here. You guys remember it sat for a very, very long time with fuel in it, unfortunately. So, you know, I thought I was gonna luck out this time because it's fuel injected. You know, oh my gosh, you don't have to rebuild any carburetors. This is gonna be so easy except with fuel in it sitting for like seven years, it's completely toasted. So re remember the entire inside of the fuel tank is pretty much solid varnish. The fuel pump is completely roast. So we've got some work to do. Right now, however, the first thing that I wanna do is work on this fuel tank. So we have some acid, we have the tank, let's fill it up, slosh it around, let it soak see how it removes all that varnish. So here we are at our fuel tank. The first thing that I wanna do is block off all the holes on the bottom. All right, next I have some muriatic acid. We'll uh, dump it in. This is like giving off some vapors. I'm gonna go put a respirator on. Okay, the muriatic acid is in, we sloshed it all around, we sealed it up, and now we will let it sit overnight. Now that the tank is sitting with the muriatic acid in it to clean all that varnish out, we have to turn our attention to the fuel pump housing and stuff. Remember, this is super nasty and varnished as well. Um, I accidentally used all the uh, acid in the tank. However, I do have some of this Ospho left over, so it's different than the muriatic acid. This is like um, phosphoric acid, I think. Either way, I have like a gallon and an eighth of this Ospho, so we can just use this on the fuel pump houses. Let's do it. All right, all the parts are soaking in the acid, so the only thing left to do is come back tomorrow, see how it all looks. Lucky for you, you don't have to wait at all. Let's check it out now. All right, here's the other piece. Sort of the same thing, uh, it's definitely better. So these will probably uh, need to be dipped a second time. So now we move on to the tank, which had muriatic acid in it, which from what I hear should work better than the phosphoric. So if the phosphoric did that good, the muriatic should do even better. Wow, look at that. Look how good that looks. Holy moly. I mean, that looks really, really good. Okay, so that actually turned out a lot better than I anticipated, um, especially just for one soak in it. So I think what I'm gonna do is put just one more gallon in, um, seal off the plugs, let it sit for like maybe five hours. Also let those other um, fuel pump case parts sit in the muriatic acid, not the phosphoric acid anymore. That stuff apparently is for weaklings and little babies. Um, we want to go for the gold and use this muriatic acid. So we'll let all that sit for like five hours, come back tonight, rinse it all out again, and then that should do the trick. The fuel pump casings turned out awesome, so awesome in fact, that I cannot wait to see how much better the tank turned out. So pretty stinking good. Uh, if the entire inside of the tank looks like that, and I imagine it does because, you know, that's the very top that wasn't even fully submerged in the acid. All the other parts, or a lot of the lower parts were. So if that's the worst of it, the best of it must be just absolutely perfect.
fill it with gas and see if it holds. And it sure looks like it's holding. A nice seal. All right, the next thing I want to do is test the pump uh, just to be sure that it functions. Um, I'm not going to run it for too long because I don't want it to overheat without any fuel in it. There you go. Uh, fuel pump replaced and it works and it holds fuel and I'm actually surprised it went that smooth. That actually did not take that long. A lot of stuff on this channel, it just makes it look really quick even though it takes a very, very long time. That actually was pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Now that the tank and the fuel pump are buttoned back up, the last thing to do is pull the fuel injectors. We have to take off a few things first. So the air cleaner, the throttle body, to do the throttle body, we have to drain the coolant, um, and a couple more things as well we have to take off all around it. That way we can get to the injectors themselves. So let's get to work. A lot of stuff to remove. Gotta try to stay organized and we'll see how they look. Okay, it's draining from the water pump right now. So we will go back and get the throttle body now. While I'm in here, I'm also going to uh, remove a couple of the weird emissions things that are on this bike. Um, it's called a pair valve. Basically what it does is it recirculates um, crankcase uh, gases back into the intake. So on top of each cylinder there's a reed valve that allows air out and then it's recirculated back. And there's all these like weird valves and big hoses and Basically, this is way over complicated, much more so than it needs to. A lot of people say that it runs a heck of a lot better without all that extra crap too. Um, so once we remove it, all we'll have to do is fabricate up some block off plates for those reed valves on top of each cylinder jug. All this crap we don't need. All right, now that the manifold is out and we have our fuel injectors pulled right here, we're gonna make sure that they're clean. Actually, surprisingly, I think all that fuel uh, varnish didn't make it into the fuel um, high pressure system. So it seems like everywhere from the high pressure line on up until the fuel injectors and those fuel rails that we saw look pretty clean. So let's just make sure now we're going to spray some uh, carb cleaner through the injectors while we're powering them on with a power probe just to make sure that they're spraying nicely. Let's check it out. So as you can see, the injectors sprayed perfectly. They're not gummed up at all, so that is great news. So I've been thinking about replacing the fuel lines on this, and there'd be two that I'd have to replace. There's the feed line, so from the tank to the fuel pump, and then the return line from the fuel pump back to the tank. On second thought, I started looking at it more, and like one of the lines has a pre-bent 90 degree, so it's like formed from the factory so I'd have to reuse that 90. Um, it, there's just too many little things building up that I'm like, uh, you know what, like some of the line, different parts of the lines have like a sleeve around it. Um, why don't I just clean out the lines perfectly? So spraying carb cleaner doesn't really get rid of any varnish. The lines aren't clogged, I'm not worried about that, but I'm sure there is some varnish on the inside. So why don't I just plug the bottom of each line fill the line with muriatic acid, let it sit for a little bit, then flush them out. And that'll, just like on the fuel tank and the fuel pump, that'll clean out any of the varnish, and the muriatic acid won't affect the rubber negatively at all, so we should be good to go with that.
All right, that worked really well. Starting with the acid, letting that soak for a while, and then flushing with gasoline, and then finally finishing with carb cleaner. I noticed that when I was spraying the carb cleaner in, it started off somewhat like tinted brown, but then after a few seconds, it ran clear. So I sprayed enough carb cleaner in each line until it ran clear for quite a while. So now I am very confident that the inside of these rubber lines are nice and clear of all varnish and sort of gumminess, and they should be good to go. So lines, check. And that's a wrap for the fuel system pretty much, right? The tank is done, the fuel pump is done, the lines, the fuel injectors. Some of it looked a lot worse than I expected, but some of it actually uh, I was pleasantly surprised about and is nicer than I expected. So from this point on, we just have a lot of maintenance to do for a motorcycle that hasn't run in so long, right? A lot of checks, adjustments. I wanna replace every fluid. But we also have to fabricate those block off plates for that emissions pair valve thing on the top of each cylinder. We've got plenty more work to do. Be sure you subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Comment and like down below and we'll see you next time. Thanks.